Hey guys, welcome to System Design Fight Club. Today we're going to be going over the design for Reddit. Uh, there's actually not a lot of resources out there for this problem. Um, there was an excellent video on it. It's not phenomenal. Um, I got the numbers that I'm going to be using for this problem from uh, the following link. Um, it doesn't actually have anything on the system design for it, just some nice traffic numbers to use. Uh, I actually kind of went a little bit deep on the numbers and I try to pre-compute most of the stuff because uh, I know that's a little bit more dry. Um, so uh, not a ton of uh, resources for figuring out how to do the design. Uh, for the requirements, uh, we're going to have um, users can make posts. We're going to have upvotes and downvotes on those posts. And then you can view the top posts list, the new posts list, and the hot posts. Um, and the hot one is usually the, the, the default view of um, posts on Reddit. Um, out of scope will be comments on those posts. I think that the, um, the post and the upvote and downvote system is kind of like where the most interesting aspects of this design is going to be. I'm not going to cover search functionality either. Um, if you want something like that, you can just probably look at like Twitter or you can look at, um, there's uh, a, a couple of other things where you do something with like an inverted index and that would be, I think a, a much more suitable problem for exploring search functionality, um, text text search functionality that is. Uh, let me specify that. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think that would be it would it would add a lot of scope to the problem. I don't think it would be that interesting compared to um, the scope that I did select for the problem. Uh, I'm not really going to cover user karma cal calculation, as in like how many uh, votes that a user account has. Um, we're going to go over callouts at the end. I kind of did those uh, in advance to make sure that I cover some of the more interesting aspects that I want to make sure that I include in this video. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, we can go ahead and hop into the numbers now. Uh, so I saw that there is 50 million daily active users, 330 million uh, monthly active users. They uh, have received 21 billion screen views in uh, a single month. Uh, they have a couple of different metrics for uh, page views. Uh, one of them was the screen views, another one was visits, uh, another one was um, page views. Uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and use the biggest number out of those three different metrics. I think you can have a, a visit consists of like multiple um, page views. And then I think the difference between screen view and page view might involve uh, the mobile experience versus the web interface experience. Um, the last couple of things are a little bit more straightforward. It's uh, they've received 32 billion upvotes in one year, which comes out to around 877 TPS. Uh, and they've also had 199 million posts in a single year. Uh, which came out to about 5.45 TPS, which was a little bit lower than expected. Um, so the, the TPS for the, the write operations is uh, a little surprisingly low. Um, and it's uh, it's definitely going to be read heavy by a factor of like at least um, 100, it looks like. Uh, and then there's 2.8 million total subreddits. Um, a lot of them are like totally inactive. Um, so there's definitely going to be a celebrity problem among the uh, uh, distribution of activity in the subreddits. Um, and then here's just like the top three metrics that I was kind of looking at from those above ones. Uh, 7,000 TPS for reads on uh, screen views, uh, 877 TPS for the writes. Uh, those numbers are uh, one, two, and three are coming from the requirements that I numbered out. Um, so 7,000 TPS for uh, the view operations, uh, 877 TPS for uh, upvote operations, uh, 5.45 on posting. Um, so again, yeah, it's going to be very read heavy. Um, so uh, I was also interested in the rate at which the upvotes would the upvotes would occur on a single post. So um, that would be um, whether we'd get a lot of thread contention on a single record if we have a counter for the posts. Uh, so I actually gathered some of my, I did some of my own research there and it was, um, this is just like the number of upvotes on um, posts that it's, it's the top post for a couple of different time durations. Um, it looks like most of the upvotes uh, are, are it, 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 like they come in in a bit of an exponential decay. So uh, it's only 4x higher upvotes for the best all-time post compared to the top one from uh, the day that I was gathering these numbers from. Um, so it's, it's, 
it really is very heavy towards the first day to first uh, week. Um, uh, so yeah, upvotes come in in an exponential decay. And then the TPS for this, I, I did the math on what the TPS came out to um, towards the front end of that uh, exponential decay. And it only came out to around like one or two TPS uh, for the, the upvote rate of even, so like even for the most viral posts on the entire um, website, it's uh, it only peaks out at around one to two TPS on a, uh, a single post for uh, what the upvote rate can hit. I'd imagine even in really like like maybe there's there's a couple of really extraordinary cases where um, people try to like game it or something. I, I I maybe you can hit something higher than one to two TPS, but I'd say still probably no more than than ten TPS. Or I I'd, I'd, I'd be shocked if you could actually hit hundred TPS for a single record. Um, so it's it's almost always going to be one to two TPS for a a, a single post like at absolute max if it's one of those, you know, top of all time posts. Um, so it's gonna be really low thread contention. That's that's why I did this research is that it's it's gonna be pretty low thread contention actually on the um, upvoting on, on posts. The, the counter is gonna not actually be getting hit all that much on a single record level. Um, and then I derived in other secondary numbers, how many of those page views? So it was, it was 7,000 TPS. Uh, per month is what I was going off of. How many of those are actually going to hit the main page to try and figure out if we might want to use some caching? Uh, it was um, So there, I found a number of about 8.6 page views per visit. So like when a person like visits reddit.com and clicks around through the pages, on average, they click about 8.6 is what I kind of gathered. Um, so at least one is probably going to be the actual homepage. So that's about 500 to 850 for the actual homepage. So that can help us figure out some stuff for um, where there's some good opportunities for caching. Um, so it, it's the, the home page is maybe a good opportunity for caching. Um, we can go ahead and jump into the diagram. Uh, I'll cover, I'll make sure to cover all of the callouts at the end if I don't manage to hit them all as we're going through it. Um, yeah, okay, you can go ahead and hop into the diagram now. Okay, I'm going to have at least five of these boxes over here. Okay, and these are going to correspond to the stuff over here. And we're going to have, uh, I want to have the upvoting one. Uh, at the top. Let's make sure the text is medium. Okay, and then we're going to have a uh, user making post right here. Okay, and then here we're going to have, um, user views have uh, posts okay and then here we will do new these will be really similar uh, scenarios, um, but they kind of help with thinking through, I think the uh, indexes that we'll be picking on the data stores in this problem. Okay, and uh, so we're gonna need a couple of backend services. So let's get started on that. Um, I think we're going to want to have a make post endpoint. Um, so make, uh, we'll just say, I don't know how we're actually going to split up the endpoints uh, among services. Uh, I, I, it's weird, in my opinion, how in, in the interviews, you, you basically have a different backend service for every single endpoint. And it's like, is that really realistic? And so um, this is going to kind of represent a full service, but I'm just naming it endpoint because it's like maybe some of these would actually be um, combined um, in reality uh, for how it would work in the real world. But we'll we'll maybe revisit that towards the end or, or later on in the video. Um, so we're also going to have the um, upvote endpoint. When a user tries to upvote a post, 
And I think we want to have, these are all going to share one. Um, maybe we can just go ahead and call that the view service. Um, okay. We're going to need some data stores, of course. So um, we're going to need to have at least one for posts. So we're going to have um, posts data store. Let's go ahead and just call it the posts data store. Um, let's maybe think about the scheme. Actually, I want to draw some arrows before we get into that. Um, so a user upvoting a post is going to be data flowing in that direction. And then we're gonna have all three of these going through the view post service. And uh, post uh, data will flow out of this data store over here. It will flow in through the make post endpoint and data will flow to there from over here. Um, so I was thinking that, well, uh, let's let's maybe talk about this, uh, this data storage scheme a little bit before we maybe talk about how to handle this. Uh, I have a couple of different ideas for it. Um, yeah, there's kind of like a couple of different ways to handle it. Um, so we have the posts, whoops data store and um, we're going to want to have a post ID. We want to have uh, we want to know who posted it. So that's the user ID. Uh, we will want to know, let's maybe zoom in a little bit. We want to know who posted it. We're going to want to know um, uh, the timestamp for when it was posted. That's kind of relevant. Uh, we want to know that there's they're going to post it on a specific subreddit. Um, so we'll say that. So for example, it might be r slash pics. We can just say pics. The r slash is from the way that the URL is formatted. Um, so you can just say pics for this pics subreddit. Um, I think timestamp. Um, so sometimes it links to a thing. So with imager, for example, you do not actually host the picture on Reddit. I know that that is actually a thing that kind of, uh, that was a thing that was introduced sometime later on in when Reddit, Reddit existed as a service. Um, so otherwise uh, you would have like an external link. So you would have um, redirect uh, link as another thing. So like HTTPS and then um, some people post YouTube videos on there an example and so then you could have like um, fireship their channel uh, maybe there's they, they would not actually link to the channel that wouldn't really make as much sense they'd probably link to one of their videos we're just going to leave it in there like that for now um okay you're also going to need a title for your post so it might be like um today i learned Blah. Oh, uh, how Haskell works in 100 seconds. There's a Fireship video for that. Um, timestamp, let's say it'll be Unix Epoch time. Uh, I actually checked this right before hitting record on this and it does, it's roughly gonna look like that. Um, okay, uh, for the post ID, oh, well for user ID, let's just have the username so we can have like Throw away one, two, three. There's a bunch of like throwaway usernames that are just written like ad hoc. Um, you want to have net upvotes. You don't want to have that calculated on the fly. So we're going to have it um, in some way. It should be so this is like a counter. There's there's well, there's upvotes and then there's the downvotes. And so you might even have. Um, Ooh, okay, so you can have a, uh, a grow and decrement, or it might it might actually make sense to have an upvotes counter and a downvotes counter. Um, <clears throat> 
And then it would just be two separate attributes. And then you just go ahead and calculate it on the fly. Um, so you can like click the upvote button and then you click it again to unupvote something. And so then you might need to have a grow shrink CRDT for upvotes and separate one for downvotes. And then you would use those two values and subtract up, uh, down votes from up votes to get the net score. But each one would individually possibly need to have its own gross shrink counter if you go that route. Um, but uh, there's, uh, there's some issues with uh, um, counter CRDTs as well, like uh, the item potent thing that I went over in the uh, voting video, the Super Bowl voting video. So it does, that still would have some flaws. Okay, um, so we have all that. Um, so for the post ID, I know in the URL it has, it will have like a number or something and then it has like a chunk of the title. Um, so the title in like the URL format is can necessarily be different than what like an internal post ID representation would be. And I feel like a good way to handle the internal post representation that might not be exposed through like a URL or something would be to have something kind of like this, a UUID, kind of like Twitter's um, Snowflake UUID system. So I'm actually going to go with that. But of course, the URL for post I've, I've seen is, is different in that it's, um, you would maybe have like a, uh, like below title, it would be um, post um, suffix. So then you would have like uh, five, six, three, three, three dash how. And then that would be different. And then, so this would actually go in the URL. And then this is the internal representation that's not actually exposed to the users in any way. Uh, it might show up in like uh, your request if you go digging in the network tab of your browser or something, it might show up perhaps, but. Uh, I feel like this is the most this this would make a lot of sense for post ID. It would be a nice way to evenly distribute all the posts. Um, okay, so we have that, and then um, users have so about when they when they submit an upvote. Um, so we're gonna have that pointing out. Um, users actually have their own upvote and downvote history on their profiles, so you might actually want to um, save each individual one. Plus, after you do an upvote. Uh, it does show up in the browser. And like, if you reload the page or you pull it up on a different device, it like will still show you that you've already upvoted a certain thing. Um, so storing each individual upvote outside of the counters actually would make sense. And you can't really have that in the same data store as that. So like an individual upvote history data store would um, kind of make sense for implementing that part of how the uh, user profiles work. So it would be um, the upvote uh, history, let's say upvote history DB. And then um, let's talk through uh, the schema for this one. Um, and then um, how the data goes from, gets to there as well is um, you're, you're gonna need to increment the counter at some point involving this operation, you can do either a DB trigger, you can do it immediately like that. As like a follow-up, you would maybe like first put it into the upvote history DB, and then you would have a second part of this operation where it puts it into there. And then if this one's dropped, you would maybe just do some reconciliation or something. Another approach is that you do DB triggers for capturing, uh, for, for doing like change data capture or something like that. Um, and you can also do um, reconciliation on top of that. Um, so that's another approach. Um, I heard, I've been hearing that uh, DB triggers are not necessarily as horrible as I've been under the impression that they are. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Uh, I think we should go ahead and add on our TPS numbers on top of the arrows to kind of get a sense of um, the scale of what some of these arrows look like. Um, so for example, on making posts over here, we have 5.45. TPS of rights going into the data base. And then we actually had um, 7,000 uh, TPS of reads coming out of it. So it's very read heavy. Um, and uh, 
it's it's the the right volume is just so low it's the, the main scalability challenge will come off of um the reads of course um and then uh but uh another issue is that the upvote write volume is actually way higher than making posts you upvote things like way more frequently than you make posts so you're gonna have 877 tps over there that was from my numbers over here yeah Okay, so we're gonna copy and paste that. So it, all the events, it, regardless of whether we do DB triggers or we have it right from there, it still is gonna have 877 TPS, which is a way bigger volume of writes hitting this thing than that 5.45, um, but it's still way outweighed by the 7,000 TPS along the read path. Um, I have those arrows going the wrong way. Jeez, how did that happen? That is the wrong direction of the data flow here. Wow, that really irked me a lot. Okay, so um, you could do a leader follower pattern here. Um, I think I talked about CRDTs a little bit briefly here and um, whether, uh, like if you were going to go that approach, like how you kind of go about it. Well, so there's 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 also an issue with CRDTs, which is the the item potent thing, which is like if you if you get a uh, if you have an unreliable network, which is your network is going to be unreliable, of course. Then um, if you have a dropped ACK off of your data store when you're doing the right, it could result in a double increment. Um, so that's one of the issues with doing um, a CRDT is it doesn't prevent that. I think you would still have that issue even without CRDTs. It's, it's just like it applies to CRDTs as well. So um, there's not really anything special about that. And like, do you really need CRDTs that would really limit your, uh, your, your database choices down to like just a couple? It's like Redis, maybe Elasticsearch. And then I think there's like SkylaDB, which is really new. And so then that would be maybe a little bit trickier to support since it's uh, newer and won't have as many people familiar with it. Um, anyways, uh, I had said we only get like one to two TPS for each record. So the contention is not going to be so high that a CRDT might make a ton of sense. Um, so I think you can go ahead and just stick with like net upvotes and then just get rid of this. And then when you're doing the trigger for the, the um, upvote versus downvote. Uh, like if it's an upvote, you do the trigger, it'll increment this one up by one. If it's a downvote, it decreases this one by one. And you're only going to get like one to two writes per second off that DB trigger for an individual record. Uh, keyword, that, that, that's pretty important for an individual record. Overall, it's 877 but per record, which is where, which is determine whether or not you want the CRDT is. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the schema for the upvote history DB though. Um, okay, so uh, you're keeping track of the upvotes and downvotes on an account uh, on a post level. So it's going to need the user ID and it's going to need the post ID. Um, so it's it's like the ID of the user that made the upvote or downvote. Um, then it's the post that they want to do that to. So for example, it would be something like that. And then um, let's say that they are upvoting their own post. And so then we would say that the user is also going to be throw away one, two, three in this case. And then um, you might, uh, I, so it's it's a history. I think they have a time, you, you probably want to have a timestamp of the down, the, the upvote or downvote in that case. So it could be like, you could replay your, your upvotes over the past week or something. And so you would maybe actually have um, a timestamp on there, um, and it would happen after the post. This one is at 5,000, and so then we could just say 6,000. Um, and uh, you probably want to have whether it is an upvote or a downvote, so we'll just call it like um, oh, vote type. That would work. And that could be um, either upvote or downvote, or what if you click upvote, you deselect it, and then you leave it unselected so that it's not set to either of those, would you just delete the record? Um, so if you're using Cassandra, well, okay, I guess even with Cassandra and just switching to another enum value, that still is an issue because it still is a update operation. 
but um, I don't like the idea of deleting data ever. So I'd rather just have um, uh, none. So you can have this as either non-existent or you can have it as uh, none. Um, so that is um, a little interesting, but I, I, I like it. Um, it's like, so you, you can just literally not have any voting activity on a post, which would mean this, this record is not there, or you can upvote something and then unupvote it, which means that you don't have an upvote or a downvote on it. And that's how you get none. And then the record is still there. So you can either have, so for the state of non-upvoted or downvoted, you would, you would have either a non-existent record, or you could have a record that is marked as, um, none. Um, yeah, I just don't like deleting records. Um, okay. Uh, so this is for the upvote history database. Should maybe talk about our choices for the databases. What do we want to use? Um, so this one, I was, some of the options I was thinking for this are um, Cassandra, uh, you could have DynamoDB, um, you could have um, at 877. So if it's globally distributed, I mean, that is still kind of on the higher end for TPS. You could probably still fit it on one node, but uh, if you ever just had a very high traffic day or something, it's like you, you might overload it. And then also since it's geographically distributed, I mean, you should probably still have it um, sharded um it's it, it would it would still make sense to to do something for geographic distribution it and that's going to impact latencies on the the read and write operations on it um so i'm going to say no with postgresql um it's just high enough tps that uh i'm going to say it's that would be like it, it's uncomfortably high tps for postgresql in my opinion um particularly when it's it's external facing production service. If it feels like internal facing and you had to retry set up really nice, sure, maybe PostgreSQL and you can even throttle it or something, but not here. Um, and then um, I was thinking Cassandra, but since we have this one updating in place, uh, those tombstone operations could be a bit of a pain for Cassandra. It could cause issues. I imagine you don't have a lot of those accidentally uploading a post things happening, but uh, I'd rather have things strictly event sourcing for Cassandra, just from how I've heard Tombstones just perform really poorly on it. And so that's why I'm leaning towards DynamoDB. Um, and eventual consistency works just fine. You don't need the strong read consistency. Uh, so we'll call that plain. Okay, um, and then for the posts data store, uh, we were all kind of throwing around Redis since it has the counter CRDT. Another one is DynamoDB again, um, which is like uh, probably clearly a favorite of mine by now. Um, and uh, we don't really need the CRDT. And then I don't, I think Redis has this nice auto balancing stuff in it. It's it's um I I don't know if uh, it's so it's it's intended for it's it, it's single threaded. So there's that it's, it's single threaded. Um, it's fast and it is single threaded, but like it it should be we need this data to be persistent, and um, so it's, it has to hit the hard disk and um, replicated so that like redundant replications so that way if like one node it's wrecked. Uh, it, that's just not really a thing that you typically use Redis for. Redis is like, it, it might have features for that nowadays, but like, you like why do that with Redis? Like, we, we don't even need the CRDT. Um, so DynamoDB. Um, and again, eventual consistency setting should work just fine. You don't need strong reads here. Um, all that means is that you might have your, your post might take a, a couple hundred milliseconds to show up uh, at worst. It's yeah, you, you, that's, that's not like catastrophic or anything. That's like just the page reloading is how long it takes for it to start showing up in the, uh, in all the 
um, nodes. Um, okay. Uh, what else? So I was, I was considering kind of, I was, I was kind of talking about the leader follower pattern a little bit. I kind of want to draw that out. Um, so that is going to kind of be how DynamoDB looks under the hood. Um, so, uh, like if, if we didn't have this, like PostgreSQL leader follower, probably huge thumbs up. It would probably be pretty solid. Um, maybe you might have, I, I haven't done the math for how much storage you would need. That could be the most contentious part for that. Um, oh shoot, I didn't talk about like, if you have a text post, because those text posts on Reddit can hit like 30,000 characters or something. Like people write like full on essays in the self posts sometimes. Um, so that would be, you, you have that as a separate thing, just stick it in data store, uh, an object store. And we will get to that in a minute. Um, I would have, um, so we're, we're gonna maybe have an optional attribute of um, object store link to like being able to find that thing. It looks something like that. Um, slash uh, my bucket slash my. Okay. Um, yeah, I still feel like drawing out the leader follower thing. Um, just kind of show how that works for scaling up reads specifically. And it like looks kind of like this under the hood in DynamoDB. Have uh, we'll have um, three read replicas, and you can literally like if you were going with PostgreSQL, if you were like forcing a PostgreSQL approach with this, um, you could have literally just if 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 it if the data fits on one node, you could literally just have one node as the leader with that volume of TPS just fine, um, and then it replicates it out to the follower nodes. Uh, you would maybe have want to have one, at least one synchronous for failover um, PostgreSQL. And then like these are all the read replicas. And then we'll take that. And you do your reads against any of these read replicas while the writes go straight to the leader node. And then, uh, but we have this 877 TPS in here. And so you're going to probably shard this. And that's exactly what DynamoDB does under the hood. It has, it has, it, it doesn't actually follow the Dynamo protocol, which is leaderless. DynamoDB does not follow the Dynamo protocol or, or the, the, the stuff from the Dynamo, Dynamo um, paper. It is actually a uh, um, multi-leader or single leader approach. Uh, it's not not like single leader as in like one singular leader node. It, it has like, I, I don't wanna get into that right now, but um, it, it's a leader-based uh, approach for uh, DynamoDB. And so it does actually look pretty similar to this under the hood. You, you, it's all managed entirely for you though. Okay. And then uh, DynamoDB does actually support DB triggers. So that just works totally fine there. And I heard they, uh, it, was, it was like particularly for DynamoDB, the triggers are pretty solid. I think those are even called, there's this thing called like DynamoDB streams. And that is what you would use here. And um, that should work just fine apparently. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, the object store for posts for like when you have like a 30,000 uh, character like self post thing. So we will stick that over here and we'll call it the post um, object store. So in the occasions where you have to do that, um, you would first maybe generate a link or something, have it over here. And then um, you can do for multi-part uploads, it's a lot more common to where it's a lot more common to have like just having the end user can actually do a direct upload straight to the S3 bucket with a pre-signed URL. Um, that makes sense for a multi-part upload, which is when all the data you wanna upload doesn't fit inside of a single network packet. Um, network packets can go up to 64 kilobytes. 
Um, that is the size of a packet of death, which was a thing that used to be able to use back in the 90s to break a router. Um, and I'll say, let's say that with the posts, when you're doing a self post, it can max out at, let's say, uh, 30,000. I feel like that's a lot. Um, like, sure, maybe they can't go higher than 30,000 uh, characters which would mean that you can have, that's, that's one byte each would be, which would mean 30 kilobytes. Um, can it be Unicode though? Can you do Unicode? I know you can do like MD markdown, but I don't know if you can do Unicode. So Unicode would be an issue and that would mean that you would have uh, more than one byte per character. Um, so that would make it bigger. So it, it's maybe it's going to be bigger than 64 kilobytes. And so it would be like, it might support bigger than uh, one packet for a single uh, post content blog blob on those really big uh, uh, self posts on Reddit. So I guess that would maybe make sense to uh, do the um, self signed, uh, what is it? Uh, URL for direct upload like that. Uh, so one, uh, store the S3 link, uh, finish that. And then you do an act back to this and then it finishes um, writing other information over here. Okay. Um, right. What else do we need? Um, I kind of wanted to, oh, indexes indexes. I want to talk about indexes. Okay, so over here, uh, partitioning keys and the celebrity issue is something I definitely wanted to cover. So that's, we we definitely need to cover that for uh, subreddit. So you don't want to do um, not good for a partition key um because some of the subreddits are way way bigger than others in fact half of them are basically inactive and then i'd guess that maybe a third of all activity in subreddits happens in the top 100 or something uh that would have maybe been another number to get some nice research on um when i was doing that oh well uh, so it's not good for a partitioning key. You could maybe use that as like a sort key. I think this would be really nice as a partition key is just the post ID. Um, so I'm just gonna label that one as the partition key. Uh, this one would be, uh, so in choosing secondary, uh, the, the sort key, um, it's actually optional in DynamoDB unless the partition key is not actually uniquely identifying and doesn't form a full primary key on its own. In my idea, the post ID should be uniquely identifying to every single post. So you don't actually necessarily need a sort key, um, but any secondary index would also make a great candidate for, a, a lot of the secondary indexes would make for a great candidate for the sort key. So uh, this one would make for a good secondary index uh, for user ID because on your user profile, you're able to see all the posts that you yourself had made. So you're gonna to to be able to filter those out um, so Reddit is still going to be a good, um, good secondary index though. You still want to index it, just not for the partitioning key. Um, this would not be a good idea unless you're, it's, it's, that would be like a full text search thing. We're not going to dive into that. We're not going to do that for title either. This is another field that would make great sense for a full text search. Um, not this one either. You just retrieve that. So you're going to do like a key value style lookup on this for the most part. No, you're not. No, um, no, you're not. You're gonna do key range queries. Yeah, you are gonna do key range queries. Um, okay, uh, post suffix, no timestamp. That one is also gonna make a good secondary index because you can sort by newest. Um, and then that upvotes also good. Um, this one would, not be um so again post id is the partition key here um yeah i guess you just don't really need a sort key here i don't know what difference it would make really to the performance um yeah all right i'm, I'm pretty happy with that 
Um, so if it's if you're going for new posts within a subreddit, you'd be using the timestamp. You'd be filtering down by that as well. You, you'd sort by the timestamp within a single subreddit, and um, yeah, sorted by that uh, within a subreddit. Uh, and that's it. You don't even look at the net upvotes at all. Um, yeah. Okay. And then for top posts, you don't look at timestamp at all. You look at uh, within a subreddit filter by the net up. You sort descending by net upvotes. And then you would also apply a filter or where clause where the timestamp is within, um, you look at time.now or something, and you'd look at all the timestamps that are within either one day, one week, one month, one year, or you just drop the filter completely for all time. And you would apply that, uh, what, whatever Unix epoch time you get, you would look at all posts that are after that timestamp for the different um, top posts within different time ranges. Um, hot. That one is tricky. That one is tricky. So I am was guessing that it would maybe be determined by something. You, you need to look at the timestamp and the net upvotes. Uh, so it'd be a combination of these. And maybe you can do some kind of inline aggregated, uh, some kind of inline um, math function for that. Um, Maybe this is where I was, I was going to suggest materialized views, but uh, I was also thinking about how um, you might actually want to cache this with how high that TPS is for the reads. Like if you just have the homepage updating once a minute, that's close enough. Um, and you would just you would just cache everything in here except for the net upvotes thing, and you would refetch the you would you would not allow the um, you would just be caching for being able to get those post IDs, and then you would do a query back out of the cache directly to um, the follower nodes, uh, where you just do a filter down the post IDs directly, and you would retrieve those just for the net upvotes and uh, the net upvotes attribute. So you're only looking at that attribute and this one. Um, and so those would not be part of the cache, but you would still get a much more sped up uh, query because it's not trying to drill down by a couple of attributes. Um, that could, I, I was thinking that might make sense um, in some cases. So you can also archive really old posts so in that case, for top of all time, you might literally just be able to cache the page and just update it once a minute because that thing's really not going to change much, like, ever. Um, so there's there's some cases where you can almost definitely do that. Okay. Uh, something else I wanted to bring up around... Oh, it was something for Karma. It was it, so I wanted to keep that out of scope for um, calculating user karma, but that is actually another reason why it'd be a great idea to update the net up votes is that you can do um, descending by uh, top um, or hot possibly, but also you also need to. Um, oh, it was it was that was oh for the user ID. That's what I meant. That's why you wanted the user ID to be a secondary index. Does it make sense for looking at your user profile, but also for calculating the user profile's um, total karma? Yeah. And you would also need, yeah, this one. Actually, you wouldn't need the index in that case because you're just retrieving all posts by that user ID. You don't, you don't need to sort it within the user ID for determining karma. You just need literally just that one. And then you're also summing up along this attribute. Cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we don't have any arrows coming out of this. And so that looks a little bit quirky on the diagram. And so just for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and have a view, like post, user views a specific post, uh, kind of detailed out uh, a little more. We're gonna call it um, view post content.
So like you, you've like clicked into like a self post or something. So then you might need to retrieve either um, a picture that's stored directly on Reddit itself, or possibly um, a big gigantic 30,000 character text blob. And that is when you would have a read coming out of this thing. And that is not curved. There we go, fixed it. Cool. Okay, I think I've got basically everything I want. This would be S3, of course. So um, S3 or HDFS, just some kind of object store on that. Um, not really a lot of, you know, not as tremendous of a variety of choices when you're just looking at object stores, I think. Okay, uh, let's look at what I wanted to call out. I did look at thread contention on upvotes. Since it's so low, you just don't really need CRDTs. Uh, we would definitely have a celebrity problem for the popular subreddits, which is why we don't want to use subreddit as a partition key. You would of course also have a, um, uh, uh, a celebrity issue for the post IDs themselves because of course some post IDs, some, some posts just really take off and get like 90,000 upvotes while others might get like two to five or just literally zero upvotes. Um, it just like nobody just clicked on it. It just didn't look interesting to anybody. And it was maybe on a really unpopular subreddit that didn't have a lot of uh, members in it. Um, oh, why? Oh, okay. So there is, of course, like, why would you not always just do this? Why would you not always just have this as a partition key? Um, so I am able to do this because I'm assuming that you don't typically have deep pagination for the ways that the users are accessing the uh, website. What I mean by that is um, when you're going, at, when, when you're click it, when you're uh, browsing Reddit, so you start with the first page, you're on the home page. There's um, pages you can click through. You can look at page two, then three. You usually don't go much further than page two or three. You usually don't go to page like 20 or 50 or 100. Uh, if you did go that deep on the pages that often, then you would start to get this really heavy um, performance impact on those uh, key range queries that are being used for rendering those pages over here uh, because, um, you now have uh, the subreddits. Each subreddit is spread across multiple partitions. And so when you're trying to um, retrieve page like 10, it has to like order all 10 pages over the network and then take just the last 25 of it. But it still has to like join all, you know, however many pages of those posts like over the network and sort them across all those partitions instead of just doing that locally on one partition which would be very performant. Um, and this is, it's, it's called scatter gather. We have to do that over multiple partitions like that. Um, so if there was deep pagination, I'd be a lot more, uh, if that was co a common scenario, I'd be a lot more concerned. And then I'd probably actually recommend just sucking it up with the hot partition issue and going ahead and partitioning by subreddit instead whenever there was um, deep pagination. But it's, I, that's just totally not common on um, Reddit. So uh, we'd be fine. We're, we're fine with the way this is set up. We can just go ahead and stick with the partition key on post ID. Um, and then why does it not apply to individual posts? Well, it's more applicable to when there's like a range of keys. So for example, when all of PIX is on one partition, and so you, you know you have your like top 10 um, subreddits or whatever that almost everyone is on and um, just dominate the top posts of all time. And so that's going to be where, you know, at least half the upvotes are occurring. It's it's kind of like, um, you know, when Elon Musk makes a tweet, gets fanned out to at like, like half of Twitter or something. Um, maybe you don't personally follow him, but like it'll show up from like your, your friends favoriting it or something. And it, it just still makes its way onto your timeline when Elon Musk tweets something. Um, and it's like Elon Musk has like a... Uh, multiple tweets and so like you can have a hot partition issue on like a singular tweet really taking off as opposed to like there's also like an entire user profile also being particularly hot like it's it's particularly um applicable to the celebrity problem um but it's it's you only want to really it only really matters that much when it's like a range of keys that is hot and being stuck on the same partition um, and then, of course, still, when it, a post is actually all that hot um, and 
suffers from the celebrity problem, it's only still hitting about one to two TPS on those super hot posts that the handful of really viral ones that hit like 100K upvotes. That's it's only hitting a, an average of one to two TPS. So that hot partition issue is still like it's not getting that hot off those top posts. It's only heating up by one to two TPS per second, which is very manageable. Um, would it make sense to fan out like Twitter? Because like, would, would you like, um, so Twitter of course has the celebrity problem and like, would you maybe want to like fan out posts of a, to a specific subreddit to like, could you just have each user has their own homepage, like local thing, kind of like how with Twitter, your timeline is actually like co-located on one like partition, one node of Redis. And so you can, when, when Elon Musk tweets, it fans out to everyone's timelines for everyone that's following him. And so similarly, when somebody posts on Reddit, you can maybe just have it fan out to everyone's homepages. I think not a good idea because the homepage jumps around more where as like with Twitter, it like sticks in, um, it maintains a chronological order. So like you're, when, when you append a tweet to your timeline, it just goes to the top. You just append it to the top of this like skip list data structure or something. Uh, I think that's, it uses like a sorted set, which is built on top of skip list. Uh, so it's not really that bad, but like, it's not a good idea with Reddit because when, um, the, the posts can just kind of like keep jumbling around and they don't, you just don't keep putting the new ones on the top uh, for new. Yes. But it's a lot of people are going to be looking at hot or um, yeah, the hot, that's the default tab within a subreddit. So it's um, and those are going to jumble around a lot all day. Um, so I don't think there's really a way that you can set it up for fan out where it would like make sense in the way that it might make sense for Twitter. Um, well, so Twitter also does the hybrid approach where like Elon Musk has his own little cache and you fetch it out of there. Um, I, I, yeah, I just couldn't really think of, uh, a way to make fan out, like make sense for performance on Reddit. Um, if you guys can feel free to comment and draw your own diagram. I of course post this diagram in the discord threads I always make for each video. So feel free to do that in there. I just throw your own diagram in it and um, you can figure out how to make fan out make sense. I just don't think, uh, yeah, I, I totally can't think of a way that fan out would make sense for Reddit though. I think that's everything that I wanted to cover. Um, got our completed diagram over here. Uh, not that crazy. We didn't have WebSockets. Uh, we, we've had a lot of WebSockets over the last couple of weeks. I think that's why this one looks so much easier. Um, yeah, well, so thanks for watching. Uh, have a great Hey, uh, yep. See you guys.